Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another video. My name is Mind Glowing and today we're going to create a DNA double helix within a cube sort of retro sci-fi something very cool uh, and I hope you learned something new today. So let's start. So to start off we need a Bezier circle. So go to curve and then circle. We're going to rotate it in the x-axis by 90 degrees and we're going to scale this up by 9.5 and then we're going to duplicate this with shift D scale it down to something like something like this we're going to use these circles in a minute to track all camera but first let's make all a double helix so what we need is a plane Take these two points and then press M on the keyboard and collapse and do the same for the other side. Now we'll go back to object mode and we're going to throw uh, some modifiers to, to create this helix. Uh, first of all we need a screw modifier. Keep this at 360 but change the screw to 10. There we go. You can already see the shape that we need. Um, then use an array modifier and set the relative offset of the x to 0 and the z to 0 0.5. Then what we need is a skin modifier. There it is. And as you can see the helix is already forming itself. Toggle these so we can see better and let's add a subdivision surface right click shade smooth and then use a curve modifier and we're gonna set this to our biggest circle and we're gonna change this to the y direction and as you can see it's all it's going around our circle right now Now increase the array till you have something like this and if it's not completely fitting uh, we what we can do is scale up or circle or bezier circle make it match doesn't need to be perfect something like this all right, and we're gonna straight dive into our geometry nodes. So make sure you are you have the double helix selected. And let's set this to a new collection. It's gonna be important for later. So press new, and let's use a distribute points on faces all right we'll use this plus on disk and let's set our distance minimum distance to 0 0.05 density max we're gonna use a little trick here because otherwise it's gonna be uh, very intensive for our viewport so let's use is viewport and then the switch node I'll explain in a second what this does. Set this to a float. And if it's false, then we're going to use 100. And if it's true, we're going to use 10. And set this to our density maximum. So what this does basically is in our viewport, the density is 10. But when we render it out, it's going to be 100. And if you want to see how it's going to look, just change it to here. And as you can see, it's forming nice, nicely. So let's set this back to 10 to be able to actually change things in real time. Otherwise, it's going to be too intensive. So let's use an instance on points node. We go connect a UV sphere to, to it 
tool instance here and it's way too big so let's change all radius to 0 0.075 something like that and then set shade smooth because right now you can see all geometry that's better and let's set a material Now let's create our material. I'm going to call this random color and let's set it here, random color. There we go. Go to our shading and let's create our color. So first of all, we need a color ramp and I'm going to use four colors. Set this to so we can see what we're doing here and I'm going to zoom in a bit so let's select four colors that you like don't have to be the same as mine I'm going to go for a cyan purple-ish we go but as you can see right now it's only purple and that's because we need to connect an object info random node here let's set this random to it and as you can see they're all randomly scattered uh, with these four colors so that's exactly what we want and then let's change it a bit more with our color ramp for our roughness and the metallic let's plug these in and let's use a wave texture to make it more interesting I'll plug in the color you can see it's getting interesting but let's play with it a bit more let's set our scale to 2 and our distortion to 17 and that's something more interesting already and now let's control T on our wave texture to get the mapping from the node wrangler no, uh, add-on and why are we doing this because we're going to add some more random uh, to the location otherwise they're all the same so that's nicer okay let's play a bit with our color ramp now going to drag this in something like this just play with it until you like the result let's duplicate this and let's plug our wave texture in our color ramp here and what we're going to do is add an emission mix these two and put the color into the emission and the color of our black and white color ramp into the factor let's flip this and let's set the strength to 5 maybe we can go to rendered view and enable these don't, don't enable the motion blur just drag it in until you are happy with the result but let's get something like that so let's switch these and then drag it over until it's just nearly visible there we go so now we're going to animate our camera so click on the camera go to um, the constraint properties and we need a follow path Here we go and select our smallest circle this time and it's way over there so what we need to do is alt G what that does is set these values to zero the location values 
then we go into track or camera to an empty but let's first set this to the offset to minus five let's animate this we're going to use 240 uh, frames so press i and go to frame 241 and set this to uh, 95 so that's exactly 100 from minus 5 to 95 as you can see it's rotating but it's rotating and showing just the owl border and that's why we're going to track this to an empty so let's set the empty and what we're going to do is track it as well so follow the path first not track it sorry and let's animate this as well so this time it's going to be at zero and at frame 241 we're going to set this at 100 for a complete loop and when we track our camera so track 2 set this to the empty and just change the up to X and um, enable target Z now as you can see when we press play it tracks it very nicely if you don't um, enable the target Z it's going to flip the camera uh, after a while there, there it was flipping so we don't want that otherwise we don't have a perfect loop so this is very important now to make things more interesting we're going to add a cube and a big one going to set the scale to 15 can't see anything right now that's why we need to add a modifier so let's add a subdivision surface first set this to 4 set it to simple so it doesn't become a sphere then select a wireframe modifier as you can see it's getting more interesting I'm going to shade this in a second Ooh. but first let's um, rotate this I'm going to rotate the X in 35 degrees Y 30 degrees and the Z in 55 degrees and when we press play and check our camera it's rotating nicely within the cube but as you can see it's looping but it's going slower at the end and at the beginning so let's select or empty and here in the timeline press T and select this to linear and do the same for our camera now it's gonna be one motion a continuous motion it's not um, I forgot to select all of these select this to linear should fix it all right so make sure you select your keyframes uh, that's what went wrong all right so now let's shade our cube into rendered mode so uh, I'm gonna change the name to cube I'm gonna add uh, I'm gonna delete the principal BSDF we don't need it I'm gonna use the fused the fuse set a color ramp the gradient texture there we go 
Control T to set the mapping. Going to rotate the Y 90 degrees. Let's bring in the black like that and then change this to purple. Change this slightly dark, something dark purple and change it to B spline. I think this looks interesting. Let's change all worlds. Black, just unplug this. And right now we can't really see the cube anymore. So what we're going to do is add four suns. And we're going to set them at 10. So first one, rotate, uh, rotate in the x-axis 180. So what we want to do is come from every side. Rotate X 90, Shift D, Rotate X, X 180. So if we just look at the suns, this is what we're getting, something like that. All right, and now we can see or cube. Right. Maybe I'm going to change the thickness to 0 0.01. All right, now let's create a particle system. First, we need a plane. And I'm going to make this bigger. Just make sure it covers the entire cube like that and add a particle system keep this on emitter and let's change our lifetime to 240 we want to play with the render set this to a, an object and we're going to create a UV sphere doesn't matter where you place it just make sure it's not within the cube so we go back to our plane and we select our UV sphere. Now what's important as well is when we go to field weight, we turn off our gravity and into the velocity, set our normal to minus 10. Go also on the render make sure the scale randomization is to 1 and I'm going to set this to 0 0.2 right let it come from the top there we go shift D rotate it in the x axis by 180 degrees place it at the bottom there we go play and we can see all the particles coming in. Now the problem is that at the end they vanish and start again. So what we are going to do is on here in the render let's animate the scale. Go to frame 200. Set this uh, insert a keyframe here and then at 240 make sure it's at zero. And this is going because the particle system is the same on both planes. It will do the same. You don't have to do it a second time. Now, when we're looking, they are vanishing quite slowly. And then we start again. If we duplicate this or double helix, um, the, it, it's taking too much space in the camera. So what we can do is take our smallest Bezier circle and we can maybe make it a bit smaller 
till you're satisfied with it and to make things not super intensive we're going to add a collection instance double helix we're going to move this into the y direction There we go. If you still think it's too big, set this at 25 maybe, 25 millimeters, then we can see a bit more. So move it. There we go. It's looking nicely. Only we can still see all planes. Let's set this to a new collection particles. And we go to viewport uh, in render, show emitter, uncheck this and do the same in all viewport. There we go. Only all particles don't have a shader yet, so let's add that. Going to reuse or random color and press this button so it gets to a, a new shader. And I'm just going to change the colors here slightly like that. It's all up to you what you choose in here. Doesn't really matter. Right. Now let's add a turbulence to make all particles go in random directions. Um, force field. Turbulence. Let's go to the properties and set the strength to 50 and the size to 5. Let's see what that does. Right, we've got to add the material to our sphere. Select your sphere and set the random color. There we go. They're moving randomly. And that's basically it. That's basically the entire animation. So what you want to do, another tip is, um, because this is quite intensive, um, you could either change your particles and here the density in our switch that's why we use the switch um, we can set this to maybe 50 uh, if it's uh, if it's not rendering properly and another tip is that I used a PNG sequence because I tried to uh, do it to mp4 uh, straight away but it had some weird errors in it and it took quite a lot of time to render it. So then we can start off again. So if you just use a PNG sequence and one image is distorted, we can just render that frame again. I hope you learned something new today and I hope to see you in the next video.